Read all the stories at homeoffice.studio and watch all the videos to get an exceptionally advanced, entertaining education. Greetings. Um, I wanted to make a video about artificial intelligence. So let's say some few things about that right at first. And uh, I agree that artificial intelligence is extremely powerful and dangerous and that we need to have our laws that kind of catch up to that because it's a very advanced, it's extremely advanced and our laws need to compensate, you know, and make, because it can, artificial intelligence can, is it's kind of neutral. It could be benign. It can be, it can be used for good. It's the operators that are good or evil, you know, and, and then there's also the accidents, you know, you got to be careful of accidents. Um, I don't think, uh, Artificial intelligence could exist without human intelligence. I, I think, I, I, you know, I could be wrong about that, but I kind of just doubt it. Doubt it. I, I think that it's a lever that we've created that, to extend our own consciousness, our human consciousness, and I think it's a good thing. It can be used for good or evil. And I, I, I do agree, though, that are we need laws that reflect the the fact that that is very powerful and dangerous and, and you know we need to have laws to protect us you know society from that kind of weapon because it could be a weapon or a tool or whatever you know it could be used as anything and um, so that's one thing I wanted to talk about another thing I wanted to talk about is Okay, so what's the whole point of all this? You know, what I'm trying to teach you is that not everybody's going to want to do, you know, be a do-it-yourself home office entrepreneur. Most people are just going to want to buy the technology from co corporations and use those tools, which is not, I'm not going to say that that's a bad idea because it's not. I mean, there's very powerful tools, but what I'm recommending and teaching is that you create your own artificial intelligence, you know, your own private cloud of artificial intelligence. The whole reason I started using Linux was the Windows 95 user agreement I read from start to finish and it said that Microsoft owned the software on my computer and my answer was no, I don't agree to that. So I started using Linux. And so you know, I don't particularly care for the the GPL either because it says nobody owns the software. And I'm not against private property. I, I think private property is a good idea. And I, I, I want to own the, computer, the software on my computer. I don't want some corporation owning it or the state owning it or anything else. But you know, having it fr the free and open software, so uh, free and open source software is better than some corporation owning the software and, and being in control. You know, and I started talking about this in 2004, long before these corporations just like have gone crazy what they're trying to do and controlling what people think and say and do and everything here. You know, controlling what I can listen to and stuff like that. I'm like, oh, that's none of your business what I listen to, you know, and talk about. I'm not harming anybody. Don't want to harm anybody. Uh, I, but I want. I just want to be free. Freedom is a good idea to me. Freedom is, uh, you know, and I stand. That's what I'm up good for. You know, that's what I recommend. You know, I like capitalism, which is private ownership of the means of production. And, and software, you know, and free and open source software for the same reason, which is free enterprise. And that's what I'm for, is for free enterprise. And so if you want to use, you know, Microsoft or Apple software or Google software, I don't, you know, that's fine. That's your free enterprise. But what I'm teaching you to do is, is to create your own private, you know, software. You know, you could use the BSD software, which I kind of like. They're, that's the best license. 
in my opinion, is the BSD license, but I've never used BSD. It's a, a bit harder to get started using that, and I, I, so I don't know much about it. But, so I use the Linux, and the, so, and what I'm trying to get to on this website, and I don't know exactly how to do this yet. I'm learning, and I'm studying. I got a new book about, I ordered three more books from Amazon for about, uh, you know, uh, what is it called? Networking. Three different technical manuals about networking and understanding the whole issue of networking. Because in order to do what, you know, what I really want to do, the first thing I recommend is you get Linux installed and learn how to use Linux. Practice using it and look at it and just learn how all the different things. And then, and then start with your spreadsheets. I would start with the home office, even though I very rarely ever use that and I don't really have a set of documents created yet. You know, I'm, re I'm going through a, a tutorial about how to use Excel, you know, because the guy, he, he's does, he does some about labor office, but the, his main tutorial, and it because it's just a spreadsheet, it doesn't matter what kind it is, but I'm trying to learn how to use it and set it set up a set of documents for my own business. You know, and I haven't really made any money from this business. You know, I wanted to make money, but I haven't really figured out how to monetize it. Right now I'm working on building an audience. But, so, you build, you learn, you get your Linux installed and you start learning how to create your business documents. You write your business plan. Write down lists of goals of what you want to accomplish, and you know for the year, and the month, and, and stuff like that. And, and write write lists of goals. Write your business plan. You know, go. You can. I I have a story on my on Holy, Home Office Studio about how to build or write a business plan. You can go there and read that. And it's just an outline. You know. Do your research. I use DuckDuckGo for my research because they don't record what I'm searching for, you know, and I value my privacy. And uh, so you get that started and you get your business set up and then you, you learn how to get Linux installed and then you start learning how to use these tools like KDN Live and, and Scribus to create content and and GIMP and Inkscape and you know KDE. I like I use KDE because it's easier to learn. You know you don't have to be a computer scientist to know how to use it. With uh, GNOME and, and some of the other ones, you kind of need to know a lot how to talk to the computer on the command line to to get it to work. You can do that with KDE. But you don't have to, you know, you can just get on there and it looks just like Windows and it's got all these graphical applications that you can use and you don't really have to use the command line. But, and that's a good way to get started. And then once you do kind of get familiar with Linux, then you start using your command line, you know, your shell. Your, you, if you're using KDE, you use the console or you can install Alacrity or Kitty are two really super fast shells that run on the GPU, the graphical user, what is it, GPU, graphical processing unit instead of the CPU, which is the central processing unit. And the graphical processing unit is a lot faster. And so, you know, that's one thing you can do. I, I switch my shell to, to Z shell. You know, the, the, the default shell is Bash. But I switched mine to, to Z shell because I just, when I first started using Linux, some, you know, I read somewhere that Z shell did everything Bash did and a few other things. And so I started using it and I've been using it ever since. And then you, you set up Vim. You know, Vim is pretty hard to learn and you don't really need to do it. You can use other ones just as you, you know, like, you know, you can, there's other ones you can use, you know. There's lots of other ones that you can use that are a lot easier to learn. But Vim is like, it was originally, VI was originally, you know, that's what they used when they created 
Linux and you know C the C programming language and Unix that they used BI that was one of the main uh, text editors that they used and it's very fast it's very efficient and very fast and if you can learn how to do it because it's modals there's modes that you so you know and you got to switch back and forth between modes and you use T max to to get your shell and your you can, so you can see your shell and your vim on the same page and everything like that. It's really it's fun, man. You know you learn. It takes a long time to learn. You know it's you have to really study to learn how to use it. But if you do use it, learn how to use vim and z shell, you're you you can control your computer. You're in control. You know your computer is not in control. You are. You know that's what I like about Linux. You know is I, I'm in control. That's the difference between Linux and Microsoft. With Linux, I'm in control. With Microsoft, Microsoft is in control. And believe me, I switch back and forth. I have a my Windows 10 desktop that I use every day right now. And uh, I use it more than Linux. And believe me, it's really super obvious that Microsoft is in control. So, you know, I recommend getting your Linux. Get learning how to use Linux and... You know, like I said, you don't have to. You can run your business, your home office, your holistic home office can be, you can use whatever operating system you want, but I recommend Linux. And it's, you know, the, 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 I would, I, I actually like integrated software, which is a mixture of free and open source software and proprietary software, because, you know, the proprietary software does a lot of things they're they're just a little bit better you know they got millions and billions of dollars to invest in developing their products so they're pretty good products but the main advantage of linux is liberty freedom free enterprise and being able to be in contr complete control of your computer from the all the way right down to the hardware and um, so you get you learn how to do Linux and learn how to edit your your configuration files and you know and learn how to get that all set up so you can edit that within your command line and in Vim and all that and then you set up a local development environment which involves you're going to have a database I I recommend Postgres SQL that's the best relational database in the world according to their own website and it's you know you could build you could run the problem of the planet earth you know it's there's no limit to how big your database can be so that's the one i recommend and you just learn it learn that system so and you'll you'll build you'll you'll have several different databases you know and you'll just keep using the same thing over and over again and you just build your little pattern you learn okay i need a database because my my data part of my if you're building your own private cloud of artificial intelligence you're going to need to understand how to to work with databases and that's so start with the postgres sql is what my recommendation you start out we actually start with uh Anyway, Caligra. Caligra is the KDE one. And LibreOffice Calc is a lot more advanced than, than Caligra, but Caligra is the KDE one. And so I kind of encourage people to work on Caligra and learn and learn, build your development environment. And you got to learn how to put in, uh, you know, containers. Put, you know, and build your applications within containers and, you know, and you could use Docker and, we, you know, it's fine to use Docker, but I'm, I'm recommending that you learn how to use Kimu, which is spelled Q-E-M-U. And that's the, that's the Linux, you know, the free and open source version of, uh, it's a Linux version of what they call that, um, virtual box where you can create a virtual box and you can run an entire operating system in there you know and you can do that in key and uh, and so and you use that you know that's you can use key for 
you know, a virtual environment for that's a valuable tool, learn how to use it. And then you use uh, LXC. LXD is the graphical, you know, front, you know, for LXC. LXC is the containerization program. It's what, you know, Docker is just a commercial version of LXC. And then LXD is the free and open source front end for LXC. And, you know, and if you, so you're, when you're using LXD, you're actually using LXC, but it's just a graphical tool instead of a command line tool like LXC is. And so you learn how to use those tools and, you know, and then you learn how to use GitHub and, or some kind of a remote, I, I recommend using a remote you know, hub of where all your data is. You keep your data in a certain, you know, GitHub is one place to do it. Uh, but there's dozens of other different programs, you know, systems that you can use to create, have your database. And the reason I liked having it remote is because in case your house is destroyed in an earthquake or a forest fire or anything like that, you know, the commercial, you know, like say, uh, one good one is Linode, which is kind of Linux. Linode, it's a free and open source. It runs on Linux, it's everything, and you can buy space on there. And, and you know, get an account on Linode and put all your data there. And then you use SSA, so you use Git to create a, a record of every change that you make in your applications that you're working on, you know, and your, you know, each application is going to have a folder and you're going to be recording everything and, and while you're making that, you know, you got a GitHub, but you got not a GitHub, just a Git running in your, in the application and, you, and everything is recorded in there. And your GitHub account, you know, your hub, your remote server, it's going to have a record so that anybody can log into that and they can check out a branch uh, uh, and work on it and edit it and change it and improve it. And then they push the, the changes that they make back to the main branch. And so you can have multiple people working on the same program. And they're not going to interfere with each other. You know, if they there's what you know, there's different ways of resolving like if somebody makes conflicting changes to a program, there's a way to fix that. It's, you know, and um, so you build that, and and then use these tools to improve the tools. Use these proof to uh, tools to improve Caligra sheets. Is the is the Caligra version of Calc? You know, LibreOffice Calc or or Caligra sheets is is the spreadsheet application for, for Caligra. And Caligra is the KDE office tools, you know, like there's a KDE, there's Caligra Words, I think, or Writer or something. I think it's Words. You know, they, they, they didn't want to use Word or Writer because, you know, Microsoft has Word and, and uh, LibreOffice has Writer, so uh, Caligra uses words with an F's, with an S on the end. And so you learn how to do that and build, not only you build your websites on your computer, you can build your website so that you see it in your browser on your computer before you put anything on the website. And, but it, you can see the website on, on your computer in a browser, just like it, if it would look on the website and you can make changes and you can see your changes on your computer. And then after you get done working, you push everything up to your live website, you know, and then that, uh, you know, and that's how you do it. That's your local development environment. And you learn how to do that and you're editing the, instead of uh, just using a WordPress website, like I'm doing now and just working on it, you know, on the hosting company's computer, you know, I would be working on it on my computer. And then when I get done working, then I just transmit it 
by SSH, which is the secure, you know, t way of transmitting information over the internet is SSH. You know, Git and SSH are two of your most important tools that you'll be using a lot. But you can make websites and you can also make what's called native applications, which are applications that just run on your desktop. And those native applications that I think need a lot of improvement right now are, um, uh, you know, Caligra Sheets. You know, I want that to be, a, you know, as fully advanced, state-of-the-art, complete, you know, uh, spreadsheet software that can compete with anything in the world. And then another one is uh, that I really like. And I, and it's, but it, it, and it's, it's a great start in the end, but it need, definitely needs work. And that's co contact and contact is the, you know, the email program for KDE. And, uh, you know, you got your email and your calendar and your, your, uh, um, you know, list of contacts and, and, and different things like that. And there's even a, there's a, like a, one of those things where you can talk to people, instant communication things. And so I've never really used it for anything other than email, really, because you know, I'm not, I, I'm kind of a, I'm not very good at writing and keeping records and stuff like that. I'm trying to improve myself. It's one of the things I'm trying to learn. And that's why I'm talking about it a lot. But I'd like to see contact improved and made more stable so it's not so you know it's kind of unstable you know i'm it's constantly i'm kind of fighting to get it to work really well and i've been switching back and forth between thunderbird which is the the what is that mozilla makes the email client thunderbird and it's pretty good but when, as soon as, whenever, uh, when, when Mozilla start, announced that they were going to start censoring their search results, I found a different, I used Dissenter, you know, search engine now, or I mean, not, not search engine, but uh, I used Dissenter web browser with uh, DuckDuckGo search engine is my default search, search engine. You know, and I don't know if that's going to be very good for development work but we'll see uh, you know and so that's what i'm doing and i encourage people to do it and i would like to i, I really want to see i want to see millions and millions of small businesses individual entrepreneurs family based you know like the family farms of old and you know websites and you know all different kinds it doesn't have to be websites there's a lot of different things you can do with the computer and um just making things in this global artificial cloud cloud this global cloud of artificial intelligence you know I, i'm not against big business you know because they make a lot of things that nobody else could make you know the internet itself i mean wouldn't exist if it wasn't for big business so i'm not opposed to big business I'm what I'm just I'm just trying to build something new and interesting that nobody else ever thought of and it's not you know you know the people just doing what they're told to do that's not very creative you know you got to the the free enterprise and the self determination is a really important part of creative freedom and and where we can just invent things nobody else ever thought of you know solve problems you know it's like that i said you know the whole ufo thing i you know i like the ufo thing man and uh because i think there's got to be if once you study and learn how life started on earth you, there you know that it's not possible that life is the universe is full of life it has to be just because of the chemistry of the universe it's that's the way the whole chemistry of the universe is it makes life you know whenever certain conditions exist like with the oceans base is, is the main thing it, if there's a planet with an ocean on it there's going to be life there you know because that's just the way the universe is and so there's got to be aliens and everybody wonders well how come they they're not here why don't they just show themselves well the reason is because 
it's kind of the prime directive, right? And the re reasoning behind that prime directive is, is that we have to find our own way. We have to make the jump to light speed by ourselves. Because if they showed us how to do it, not only would that hurt us, but it would hurt them. Because we, we, we might think about a, to a way of doing it totally different than anybody else ever thought of. You know, we, the, that, that creative freedom, you know, the, the, they can't harm that. You have to protect that. It's it's not. A, it's actually a true story. I mean, it's not. I know it's the whole Star Trek thing. I'm a big Star Trek fan, but that's why the Prime Directive is. You know, not. You know, I'm just saying. You know, I'm using that term because it's a. It's actually a very good idea. You know, and there's a logical, philosophical reason for it, and that is that we have to find our own way and learn how to do it ourselves once we learn how to do it learn how to make the jump to life speed and we can travel to other solar systems then they're going to be right there ready to trade and do whatever it is interplanetary species do you know i don't know what i don't necessarily think it's going to be anything like star trek but it's going to be something you know whatever it is you know i mean human beings we we've had that explorer you know, part of our personality, the human race has been, we've always been explorers, you know, we've been doing that forever, ever since we've been life on earth, you know, we're about ready to make the jump to light speed. I think it has something to do with the dark energy and, you know, being able to control that. I'm pretty sure those alien spacecraft are, they're generating their own f gravity. That's why they can make really acute angle turns, you know, 500 G turns and not, and not be killed or anything like that because they don't even notice it. They just, they just go here, go there and, and the ship just automatically goes there. You know, it's not like they're steering the ship or anything. The ship just goes wherever they want to go and it doesn't, and they're generating their own gravity. So the gravity outside the ship doesn't affect it at all. And that same power is what makes them able to jump from one solar system to another. That gravity somehow, I don't know how, I have no idea how they would do that. But the, only, the, the whole acute angle turn thing is what make, makes me think that, you know, because the inertia, how, why, what are they doing to cancel the effects of inertia? and that's what it would that's the one thing that would do it is if you were generating your own gravity field it's it's kind of like when we were uh when the europeans were worried about falling off the edge of the earth you know when they're sailing ships before they finally you know took the risk and found out that the earth was a round ball instead of a you know that's kind of where we're at now only instead of worrying about falling off the edge of the earth we're trying to figure out how to go from this solar system to another one you know and it, which is a pretty big leap you know so get build your own cloud of artificial intelligence and start investigating this stuff and start working on it and creating this free and open source economy throughout the planet you know the whole planet earth and the human race is all one giant you know global federation of self-governing nations you know it's one global civilization you know and um, you know it's fun i mean we live in the richest greatest civilization in human history we're on the the whatever's going to happen and it, i'm sure there's going to you know it might get worse before it gets better but i'm i'm th this is i'm so excited about what's going on right now technologically and socially and every other way man this, spiritually the human race is evolving you know it's like there there's what they call a uh, um, punctuated equilibrium where you know, you know evolution occurs extremely gradually, you know, very over millions of years it happens, and then every once in a while there's some event. A lot of times it's a climate change kind of event. Something happens, and suddenly the world changes. 
You know, there's an ice age starts or an ice age ends or whatever, you know, and the whole planet is affected by that. Okay. Well, I believe human civilization is going through one of those. And, you know, like how scientists today look back, okay, there was where's the the iridium layer or the KTPG boundary or whatever it is where the asteroid hit the earth and killed all the dinosaurs, you know, and they can see the layer of soil where the asteroid, you know, was threw up a whole bunch of dirt and stuff. And that caused the, you know, the earth changed after that. And, um, a hundred thousand years from now or thousands of years from now, whenever people are going to be looking at the, for the pollution layer and they're going to see this layer of pollution. And then before that, there's going to be a whole bunch of, you know, different regional civilizations fighting for control, you know, and fighting and competing and rising and falling. And after that, there's going to be one universal and divine civilization evolving in waves of progress from now on. And it'll be peaceful and there won't, you know, it won't end like the old civilization does, but it will just advance in waves of progress. And that's happening. It's already started. It's, the, you know, that, that, that universal and divine civilization is already here. This planet, you know, it's... Divine civilization involves every human being practicing submission to God in their own life. It's, you know, and, and the United Nations, it's the richest, greatest civilization in human history. And it's corrupt, it's, you know, it's all kinds of things like that. And, you know, it's weak and feeble right now, but it's getting stronger, it's learning and we're growing. We, the people of earth are growing together into one universal and divine civilization. And that's a good thing. It's scary and we gotta be careful. We gotta make sure that, you know, the the patriots stand up for freedom and democracy around the world and human rights and be on guard against any tyrants that rise up anywhere in the world and uh you know make sure that we got ways of dealing with that and uh, just it's going to be fun you know and there's all this war and disease disease will be very rare and easily dealt with, you know, um, and, uh, you know, there won't be any crime or war or poverty. Probably won't be any really super, you know, this, I, this, you know, having billionaires with the people, you know, because people get an advantage and then they use that advantage to increase their advantage. And, you know, that's, there's got to be some way of, I don't know if we do, we could do it voluntarily, what, you know, because if you just follow the the faith, then nobody would do that, you know. When when you get the advantage, you would use that advantage to help the whole entire human race, you know, because that's kind of one of the principles of the faith. And you, uh, so I don't know that you necessarily need to have some kind of rule against it or anything like that. I think it, would, it will just happen naturally because people would realize, well, wait a minute, what am I doing, man? This, I'm hurting myself, you know, by having billions of dollars. That's not healthy. It's not okay, you know, and because um, we want the whole entire human race to be prosper, pros you know, prosperous and uh, peaceful, peaceful and prosperous. We want the whole entire human race, every single human being alive on earth. Every prison should be a rehabilitation center. Every school should be teaching people how to increase their money, you know, because you, you have to increase money. It may, we may not even have money. I don't, I don't know what the economy is going to be like. You know, it may be totally different. And, uh, but, you know, to be responsible, then we need to teach that in school. Teach every, you know, if you want to solve the income inequality problem, you sh instead of uh, punishing rich people, you should, or demonizing rich people, you should be 
teaching poor people how to make money? How, you know, what are those rich people doing? How, how are they making, how, why are they rich? And learn how they're getting rich. And, you know, you don't want to be greedy. Like I said, you know, I mean, if they're doing something that's corrupt, then you don't want to fall that way. That's for sure. Corruption is, you know, corruption. And it's not, it's evil. Corruption is evil, you know. So don't do anything corrupt. Don't be evil. Don't be corrupt. Um... The family, you know, get faith. the faith is the most important thing of all. It's more important than everything else. And then family is the most important relationship in your life, you know. It's t your family, take care of that. You nurture your family and make sure your family take care of your family. And um, your nutrition and exercise, take care of your physical health. And, um, you know, that's just something you do, you know, keep working on improving yourself for all your whole entire life. You should be working on improving yourself, learning, studying and learning new things, learning new skills and being productive. You know, you, you, not working is not healthy. You have to work. You have to be productive to be healthy. You know, it's like. That's just part of human nature. And so learn how learn some skill and increase your abilities and trade those abilities and you know with in the free marketplace, the worldwide free marketplace. Make sure it's productive. Make sure everybody that you trade with gets a uh, a uh, good deal, you know. You want people to like trading with you, you know, so you make sure they get a good deal trading with you. And then people will want to trade with you, see? And um, so make sure you're productive. Produce something valuable. So produce something beautiful and valuable and trade it in the free marketplace. You know, and don't litter. You know, clean up the earth. We got to clean up the trash. Clean up the pollution. We got to clean that up, man. You know, did I ever finish that part of the story about the guys that uh, finding, looking at the pollution layer and, you know, we got to clean that up, man. You know, that's so, you know, clean it up, clean up the trash and um, make the world a better place. You know, it's, it's a great adventure. Life on earth is an adventure. And, um, but anyway, yeah, I just wanted to write about that, you know, this, try to get people to see, you know, because I see what's going on right now in the world. I got a fairly decent job. I'm doing that. And I'm just a little concerned about the news. You know, I've been, like I like watching the news. I've always watched the news. I want to know what's going on around the world. I've been studying it my whole life. And the world is getting really kind of wild right now. It's, and I'm worried and I won't, but I'm not really super worried because I know the most great peace will come. There's no doubt about that. But, you know, it's getting crazy right now. And so what I recommend is that you build your own private cloud of artificial intelligence and use that leverage to build something, you know, valuable and beautiful and trade it in the free marketplace, the one worldwide free marketplace. And um, so anyway, you know, work on labor office, work on Caligra, work on KDE and getting all those tools and creating a, a new KDE I just got a warning on my phone, man. So I'm thinking, well, maybe I better cut it up, call that enough. It's 39 minutes. That's a good place to stop. So, yeah, make the world a better place, man. Work on your computer and build things that are, you know, learn, learn how to do it. It's fun. I like doing it, and it's not hard. I mean, you're, you sit in a chair all day. You're going to have to practice Qigong or something like that to make sure you get plenty of exercise, but, you know, just make sure you get plenty of exercise and eat healthy and work on improving yourself every day. 
day after day for the rest for the rest of your life forever you know so I just found I just noticed that my, my phone has a time limit on it it's about a little over 30 minutes and that's okay because I mean uh, I can't expect too much out of this phone but I just wanted to kind of finish off the video because it kind of ended a little abruptly I was just kind of rambling on about some interesting hopefully entertaining stuff about computers but taking care of yourself you know um, you know eat natural whole food eat lots of natural whole food and not very much processed food you know and uh, exercise take good care of yourself and um, you know uh, and work on these applications work on improving console and uh, contact and uh, you know contact is the main one I'd like to see contact uh, you know so I could log into it on my phone and be a total you know because I studied a little bit you know a Kanadi is the some kind of an application that holds everything together and talks to the database you know and it's kind of like the the middleman between the database and your email account and your contacts list and everything like that and so you know you got to learn how all that works and get it downloaded into your local development environment and um, work on improving it and getting it and getting it so you can get an app on your phone so that you have you have just this central communication system, you know, I call it a personal information management system, and have it so that you can use all, all your different. No matter, you could use any computer. You could log into it on any computer. You could log into your contact account, you know, and you'd have it. You'd you'd probably have to have it on a, your remote server in order to do that. See. That's where Linode comes in, or any other. There's, like I said, there's dozens of different companies that have computer, you know, server cloud where you know where they have all the servers and you can rent space on there, and it's more secure, you know. And you'd have a copy of everything on your computers, you know, your desktop computer at home and your laptop, and the remote server, you know, the Linode account would be kind of the central hub of everything and that way if any one of those even because you know the what the the node could get wiped out too man but it you know if Linode and your house both get wiped out then I guess that's you know I don't know what so you know the one you know if there's like uh there's a possibility that uh, the the whole uh what do they call that the with the nuclear detonation that wipes out all the electronic equipment what I, they call that you know if that happens i i hope it never happens i you know but if it does happen then you're gonna have to survive for a year or two and and then you know we'll, we'll just rebuild everything but i mean there won't be any electricity all the websites will be gone everything will be out you know to turn out the lights and it'll take us a about a year probably to get everything back online so just that's one thing that might happen hopefully not you know but it's a possibility and uh the mag what is it the ma electromagnetic pulse you know just in, in case that ever happens you know just you know, it's a good idea to be prepared, have a year's worth of food supply, you know, for any kind of event like that, you know. But this civilization is going to last from now on, you know. And I'm trying to encourage you to build your own local development environment on your computer and start working on these programs and getting them to work the main the my the, the main one is contact i'd like to see that developed into a really high performance you know central 
you know, personal information management system. And, but another one that I'd like to see work is uh, Caligra and with and Caligra Sheets specifically turned into a really high performance spreadsheet program, you know, application. Those are the two main ones, but, and there's plenty of other ones, you know, you could do, uh, uh, they got a browser, Krita, you know, they're working on a browser it's called Falcon. That could definitely be improved, you know, and get, turn that into a, uh, a uh, development workstation, you know, where you can use your, you know, put all that development software in, in the browser. And, uh, the, you know, and just work on those KDE applications and get them, basically build a whole new operating system based on KDE you know and you could take whatever you know uh, Ubuntu is fine you know but you could even separate it from you fork uh, Ubuntu I, I you know I don't know how to pronounce that you know I've had people say I was saying it wrong I don't you know Ubuntu is what it sounds it looks like to me uh, it's a great word it means uh friendship you know friendship with every person that you meet and friendship with the whole entire human race that's that's a great name ubuntu and uh, but anyway i, I just wanted to kind of put add an ending to the the 38 minute video i just recorded and so that seems to be the limit on what this phone can do for one video and um you know, build your website, you know, I'm just showing you what I'm doing while I'm doing it. I'm, I'm telling you what I'm doing while I'm doing it. So and you can follow my example, you know, uh, both, you know, the precept and the, and the example, you know, I'm trying to teach you how to be a uh, high performance, very advanced high performance capitalist entrepreneur. Anyway, thanks and peace be with you.